everyone, my name is Sam. <clears throat> Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end, I'd like to then subscribe, bell notification, give the video a thumbs up. Sorry if you can't tell, I am sick. I did have to get COVID tested because I have all of the symptoms, including the eye issues and the runny nose, except for lung problems. But I tested on Wednesday morning and I got my test results back on Thursday morning and they said negative, so... I think it's just a shitty cold, which I don't get colds or flus or anything normally. So in addition to like just not getting them, I've been washing my hands nonstop. I'm not going into stores touching things that I'm not buying. Like, I just know it was one of those assholes walking around no frills with his fucking mask down under his nose thinking he's being real smart. Who gave me the fucking flu? I just know it. Um, anyways, um, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the books that I bought in February, and, um, yeah, I'm probably filming a couple videos today, so I'll probably look the same in the next, I don't know, two to three videos, <laughs> but anyways, uh, January was really good, actually, I didn't really impulse buy anything, I did buy a few things that I didn't have pre-ordered, but they were things that I was super interested in, and, um, I'm excited about them all. So starting off, I picked up Ashes, woo! Ashes to the Sun, I don't know if you can really see that. Um, Ashes to the Sun by Django Wexler. I was almost going to be getting the UK copy of this with the Goldsboro edition, um, or the Goldsboro Sci-Fi Fellowship, whatever, but I ended up getting rid of that in 2020. It was great, I just couldn't keep up with all the books. Um, but, <coughs> but also it was like $50 for a single book when you take in shipping and conversion to Canada, and I was like, I wanna make sure I really like the books. So this is just an author that I somehow have not tried any of Django's work um but this I really like the cover and my store finally had a copy in stock and I actually don't hate the U.S. North American covers I'm trying to figure out what movie this reminds me of because there's several like dystopian -y fantasies popping into my head that I feel like I've seen someone standing on like a hand or like a robot some something from the ground I don't know what it is but this sounds super interesting um they're siblings I think it is I think it's siblings or are they twins specific no just siblings one who wields magic for the empire and the other who's vowed to bring down the empire so they're obviously on um opposite spectrums there um and uh, will battle for the fate of their world in the first book of an epic new trilogy so I'm excited actually to really finally try this author but honestly I've been just getting more into adult fantasies why fantasies if I've really just not been able to hold my interest and I'm maybe I'm just maturing uh, as a reader I enjoy them sometimes and some of them are like excellent but and just really bring me in for either the quality of writing or the world is super interesting or whatever but I feel like a lot of them are kind of copy paste um, of, of a lot of elements and those just haven't been um, sticking with me as much so I'm getting more comfortable going into the adult fantasy realm now which I was afraid of for a long time because I just thought of all adult fantasies as high fantasies and therefore I can't comprehend them and then I read Mistborn last year and it was fantastic and I understood it all so hopefully I like this and I hope to read this in like maybe April I'm looking at my TBR for now. Speaking of me not reading YA <laughs> I also picked up Angel of Greenwood by Randy Pink but anyways um this just caught my eye honestly when the cover got revealed and I looked into it and I was like what like this is awesome and I think especially with everything that's happened in the United States in the last year um it's become concerning to me that I know more about the Tulsa riots than a lot of my friends who live in the United States specifically in the Tulsa area that's concerning to me I didn't take like an American history specialization or anything like that I just took history courses in university but I'm fairly certain I learned about this in high school um, when we talked about um, the the treatment of black people throughout the United States on a timeline and I, I that's concerning to me so I think this is one that if you live in the Tulsa area and don't exactly know what the hell's been going on um, probably a good one to pick up but the main characters I think there's two of is there two or three of them 17 year old Isaiah Wilson and 16 year old Angel Hill they both end up working for the mobile library services because they for their own reasons and um while they're out they the the is it i said black friday the other the other video and i was like what why do i think that the black wall street tulsa oklahoma happens and i just think i like what, what's the other book that i feel like i read something similar timeline ish dreamland burning if you haven't read that book that was super interesting as well that there's multiple timelines in that one but it also talks about um racial tensions historically in the united southern united states so um i'm i'm very curious about this one i'm not sure when i want to 
to read it. I don't know, I have to figure that and look at my TBR, but it's not super, super long either. So I think it's one that I'd be able to like sit down on a Saturday. Maybe I'll reserve this for when I get my new couch. I think it's supposed to come in March and I'll just sit down and not move for the day. Maybe that's what I'll do. Either way, it is is uh, this like burnt, burnt orange red. I don't know how to explain it. It's not quite like a true red, but and there's these blue flames on her. Everything is matte printed. And then the under dust jacket is just plain black with the spine in red. But the under pages there are blue, I think to match the blue flames there. So then I picked up and I honestly read this before I bought it. I bought it because I loved it so much. Um, and if you watched my December wrap up, you saw that it was my most favorite book of December. Eric Archives, The Librarian's Investigation into the Sciences and History of Books Bound in Human Skin by Megan Rosenblum. This is wildly interesting. Like just, I'm saying this as someone who is not, like I said, I failed grade 10 biology, okay? I spent every lunch and extra period I had studying for that fucking course and I do not understand biology. I went into grade 10 being like, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a physiotherapist, so I have to go into kinesiology because I was in sports all the time and always getting hurt and it interests me. Nope, nope, because I couldn't tell the difference between any fucking thing in my biology science class, no matter how much I tried. But this, very, very accessibly written, and it is, some of it is scientific. Um, like they're talking about the testing that they do, that they want to develop something that doesn't destroy um, books, because when they do, they only have to scrape off a little bit of the, the cover to test it, but they want to try and, especially with older, older books, right? You don't want it to be destroyed. And sometimes that's the reason people won't get books tested. So they don't know for sure. It's wildly interesting, but it talks on these like huge subjects of uh, consent, um, bad history or bad medicine over the past centuries, um, racism, past and present within the health sciences. And just this concept of like, why would people, when they, like, they used to like market these books, it's like, oh, for sale, a book bound in Arabian human skin. Like just like these weird languages and analyzing like, was what, like, why did we, like, what is the, is there rate, what is the racism built in there? We know it is historically. And talking about certain collections that are all over the United States and mentions that famous, um, Nazi lamp thing that has always been rumored and so it's really interesting it's super compact though it's I think the audiobook's only like seven hours it's super short so interesting though blew through it and I was like I need to own this book um I wish they would have like foiled the crest thing in the middle with the skull and everything but it's really cool in person and it's a burnt burnt orange nothing on the end pages and whoops the under dust jacket is also just plain black with the spine in just Gold there. I finally picked up a copy of A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem by Mandy Collins. I know this doesn't have astronomical review, reviews, stars, ratings, whatever on Gertrude's. I literally don't shit care though. I'm gonna be totally honest. Look at the cover! It's so cool! I love covers like this. And I think it, he owns... He's the detective, Andrew Eversham, and she's a newspaper columnist who finds herself the subject of speculation and the latest article leads to an arrest of a murderer plaguing London. The English believe women ought not to write about such vulgar thoughts as crime. Wait until they get to 2020 and find out we're all obsessed with true crime. Also, I saw a TikTok that said women are all obsessed with true crime because they're studying it to make sure they can protect themselves from psycho men. And I was like, that would explain an awful lot. <laughs> but anyways, it sounds like a... I think all of my interest in this kind of stuff started with uh, A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn and um, it's just continuing. I literally don't care if it's a shit book. I really like the cover. <laughs> okay, I have another fucking story to do with the stupid Nevermore finished language book editions. Okay, I think I need to make sure I make this fully clear. This is book two. This is a Wondersmith in the Finnish language. Beautiful. It's all like metallic-y. I can't pronounce it. I can't speak Finnish. I'm just collecting them because I love this series. So if you remember, I ordered book one and two in Finnish in the same order. I bought them in October and end of October came, November came and went, December came and had almost went. And I emailed Book Depository to say, um, I... I noticed you don't have Canada on your list of countries experiencing large backlogs with COVID or whatever. So I'm just wondering, maybe you guys, when they ship it to Canada through Bitcoin Depository, they do not give tracking at all. They just say it's coming and you just wait. Um, so I emailed them and was like, do you, do you know what's happening with it? Do you have an updated, like estimated time of delivery based on the backlogs maybe you're experiencing and haven't updated the website like do you have tracking information that you just didn't give out like something because these 
like there's they're they're missing it's been like over two months something's wrong and um they're like yeah no they they must be lost we'll resend them okay just kept waiting uh in january i went to work to after hours to grab something from my cubicle and there were packages on my desk yay two separate packages so i was like for book deposit i was like i only ordered one one order from book depository. Why are these in two separate packages? So I don't know what the fuck happened there. Um, this was in them. And then in the other one, along with the receipt, invoice thing that said it was never more, was this book. Don't know what it is. Don't even know if this is finished as well. Not a fucking clue what this is. Not, not a clue. I don't even know if this is the original order or the second one that they sent when the other one got lost. And I emailed them and said, what is this? I have no idea what this is. This is not the book that's invoiced in it. So what the fuck happened? Also, why did these come in two separate packages? What is this? And they were like, yeah, no, someone definitely pulled the wrong book and sent it to you. Our bad. But we're experiencing such a backlog issue that we're not going to resend it. So we'll just give you your money back for the other book. So it's been like six months to try and get two books from Book Depository. They've apparently sent four. One of them was what I ordered. Like, I just want the Finnish language editions of Nevermore. Why the fuck is this so complicated? And I've been waiting and waiting. I can't go to the office right now because I'm under isolation, but the... Of the four books that sent, only these two showed up. So I don't know what the fuck happened to the other one. Maybe they'll show up in a year or something like that this is why I fucking hate book depository but they're the only other there's like I don't know where else to get things that are international languages especially something that doesn't even use the romanized alphabet I've tried like the Danish and Finnish websites and all this stuff I can't fucking find anything anywhere even when they translate it because it translates word for word which is not how you should translate shit I just want the Finnish language edition why the fuck is this so complicated um if you're not on TikTok then you won't know this but if you are you will know that this is all the fuck that book talk is talking about right now <laughs> I have never read anything by Jennifer L. Armentrout somehow. Um, I know she's super popular though and has like a big cult following and everyone is like loving, loving these the way that they loved Akatar. So I was like, honestly, I'm curious about this. Maybe I'll buy it. And then in the TBR and Beyond group, uh, yeah, we've announced it. I can say that. Um, we're doing a kind of multi-month read where March we're reading this one, April we're reading, April we're reading this one, and then in May we'll be reading the book three which comes out in April I think it is. So I bought them to join in and I know they're indie or self-published or small published or whatever so I and they're being talked to everywhere so I just grabbed them when I saw that they were in stock because <laughs> I didn't want them to sell out and then not be able to participate in the group read. So I grabbed them and I have them. I genuinely though have not read the summary. I just know they're chunkers and everyone's loving them and there's supposed to be some saucy scenes so that's fine I'm cool sounds all good with that and um I'll if as long as I like it I'll as long as I like book one honestly I'll place a pre-order for book three in paperback whenever I can and then um hopefully participate in that I think there's supposed to be five books in this series but this is book one from Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire is book two and that's just legitimately all I know. I also got a copy of Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alst Alston. I keep wanting to say Alston. Alston. This is so freaking cute. The middle grade book is so freaking cute. It's so cute. I just, it's so, I wanted it so bad. So you can see there's a little bit of like glitter background reflective-y and then the title there is, is foiled a little bit. Um, this is the spine here and the back. It looks very like Northern Lights-esque. It's so pretty. And there's the under dust track is this like Robin's egg blue. And then the spine has these foiled stars. And then the spine is gold there. Or the under dust track is foiled stars. And the spine is like that. It's so freaking cute. It's so freaking cute. The cover. And I honestly don't feel like I've heard a ton of people talk about this book. So I'll just make sure to blurb or the summary here. Amari Peters has never stopped believing her missing brother Quentin is alive, not even when the police told her otherwise, or when she got in trouble for standing up to bullies who said that he was gone for good. So when she finds a ticket, so when she finds a ticking briefcase in the closet containing a nomination for a summer tryout for the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, she's certain the secretive organization holds the key to locating Quentin. To be a young kid and to be like, oh, a ticking time, a ticking suitcase. I wonder what's in it. Like, no, not, not as an adult. 
If only she could wrap her head around the idea of magicians, fairies, aliens, and other supernatural creatures all being real. Now she must compete for a spot against kids who have known about who have known about their magic their whole lives. No matter how hard she tries, Amari can't seem to escape her, their intense scrutiny and doubt, especially once her supernatural, um, especially once her own supernatural, natural, supernaturally enhanced talent is deemed illegal. With an evil magician threatening to the supernatural world, her classmates thinking she's an enemy, Amari has never felt more alone, but if she does stick it out and pass the tryout, she may, she, uh, but unless she sticks it out, she won't find her brother Quentin. It sounds super sweet. It sounds like a, a, a bit of elements of, um, Nevermore a little bit. The whole, like, going with, going to find your, um, your knack in the Nevermore books is called, um, and competing to be a part of the Wonder Society. It sounds wonderful and like I just I remember reading the summary and being like this just makes me happy. I have eclectic taste so in literally the same package I also got my copy of In the Garden of Spice by Camilla Bruce. If you don't already there's this channel um Bailey oh my god what's her last name just put murder mystery makeup into YouTube and she'll come up. She did one on um, the Black Widow of La Porte. Uh, she's got a few different names. But this woman, there's so much like unknown of the actual incident. So she might have escaped and literally just faked her own murder because there's been sightings afterwards. And it's just like wild. But anyways, this woman in the middle of like, oh, oh, which is it Idaho? It's one of the like central states that as a Canadian I look at and I'm like, mm, you're probably a little racist. Those, one of those places. Um, um, anyways, in like, I don't know, the 1800s or something like that, um, all of a sudden her house burnt down and they found a bunch of bodies in. So they were like, okay, it was the mother and her children. Um, and then they find a bunch of bodies all over the farm that she owned and they're like, the fuck? Like what? What happened here? Um, and then we find out like she's had a string of really weird fires in the past. That's weird. Uh, her husband before this, you know, I think she'd had a couple husbands by the time she died. Her husband, uh, her first husband, shall we say, they, uh, they had two days where they had an overlapping life insurance policy and he just like randomly died in his sleep on one of those two days. The odds. And then their business burned down like the day after the day before so she got insurance money for that and you'll never believe it a week later her house burned down what are the odds what are the odds and then all of a sudden this house burned down she moved to this farm and whatever happened and another husband weirdly died this girl cashed in insurance money like left right and center but there's so much unknown and i genuinely just want to know how the fuck we're gonna mess with that and I just love the title of this book. I am so excited about this. There's just a bunch of like loopholes in the story that we don't know. And like, it was such before DNA testing too. So they're not even hundred percent sure who all the bodies are. Did she stop at other places and bury bodies elsewhere? Just so much unknown where people completely throwing her under the bus. Like it's just, I'm so excited about this one. So I'm reading this in February. Then I picked up a copy of Allure by Alexandra Bracken. I think this ended up hitting New York Times for a couple weeks now, actually. Great on her. I read the Darkest Minds books and I enjoyed them. I don't, I didn't read them during like the Hunger Games era. So I didn't end up reading the full series, but I read book one and I was like, I like this. I'm not going to continue with it, but I'm, I like this. I like this. And then I read the, the, and then I read The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, I think is the duology's official title. That duology is fucking amazing. It's so good. So good. So I was like, okay, I'm following. And then we have lore and it's a mixing of, I think it's modern day New York city where there's gods that essentially get like hunted down by essentially like what I imagine are demigods, like Percy Jackson level people. And if you can kill a God, you like get to take over and it sounds wild. I know some people haven't been loving it. I literally don't care. I really want to try it though. And there's Medusa shit and I love this cover and then the marbling on the back. So it's not just pure white. And then the under dash jacket here has the map. And, or sorry, the end pages. And then this is just this like creamy white with the gold, which actually I thought was gonna be boring, but it actually looks very crisp. I like it. I like it a lot. In the same order I put in for Blood and Ash, I also picked up A Touch of Darkness. I've seen this fucking all over the place for indie books. Or is it indie or self-published? I think it's self-published actually. It's uh, the author's writing a Hades and Persephone series. The first two books of the of the original series here are out. I think she has six planned. And then she also has book one of a Hades POV of this one. So I'm curious, people seem to love this. It's supposed to be a very, a lot of steamy romancy stuff in here. That's all I know. I love the covers of this series. So I thought I'd give it a go. 
and A Touch of Darkness is the first one, so I will be, I think this is on my February TBR as well. I also picked up Roman and Jewel. This is one of my books that I did pre-order. It was one of my most anticipated of the year by Daniel Dan, Dana L. Davis. Um, it's supposed to be Hamilton meets uh, Romeo and Juliet retelling, and I was like, ah, that sounds amazing. So I had it pre-ordered. I am very excited about this. Um, again, haven't really heard anyone's feedback on it. Literally, though, I'm like, I don't care. I want, I want the cover alone, just on my shelf. I just want it. So, and finally, oh, wrong way. I got a copy of A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I have been watching this book for like, it's been like two years since the cover and whatever and shit went up on Goodreads. And I was just watching and watching and waiting and watching and waiting. Finally, fucking came out in North America. I'm so excited. It's supposed to be a feminist, like, spin on um the the trojan war the iliad and the odyssey and all that shit i'm super curious about this the paperback has the gold stuff foiled and the yellow stuff is um kind of a glossy finish and then the back is matte so there's a lot of different textures so a lot of it stands out despite being printed on just plain trade paperback papers i'm also gonna wait until the summer for this one i think because of the trojan war i think of desert and that's that's summer. So yeah, those are the books that I managed to accumulate in February, in January. Have I been saying February this whole month? Oh my god, this whole video? What is wrong? Okay, this was January. Okay, the books that I bought in January. Anyways, I will link all of these books. No, I won't. I will put all of these books on my Goodreads shelf that is called Own. And if you see the date added column, you just change that and they'll show up in there. I'll put them on there. So I will link all of my information, including my Goodreads, down below. Uh, and, uh, what else? Staying safe, wear a mask, over your nose, Chad, uh, Black Lives Matter, and hold the line. Don't fucking sell those stocks, bitches. I don't know if that's going to still be relevant by the time I put this video up, but I see what y'all doing with GameStop and AMC. I fucking love it. <laughs>